In this video, we are going to look about Human Genome Project, an international mega project to decode human genome. Who initiated this project? All US Department of Energy and the National Institute of Health, along with 18 countries, started this project. When did they start? They, they estimated around 13 years for this project, and the idea was planted in 1986. But actually, the, the project started in 1990, and for like after lots of research and tiresome of work, this project has published in 2003. But still, some bits and pieces of work has to be done, and the whole project was completed in the year 2006. Now, why, why we have to do this project is to understand the human genome. Where this project has been performed is at Sanger Institute, located in United Kingdom. Okay, this throughout this video, we will be talking about genome, genome. We would have heard about genes. Okay, genes are uh, fundamental units of our life and uh, we are made up of genes. We used to study all these things. But what is genome? Genome is nothing but whole genes are called like complete collection of genes. We call it as genome. So if you study about a bacteria and if the, we are studying all the genes in the bacteria, then we call it bacterial genome. If we are studying each and every gene of a human, it's human genome. Okay, so complete set of genes in an organism is called a genome. Now coming to the Budget allocated for this project is around nine million dollars. You would have think, oh, what a huge amount of money! But what's the way to spend this much of money for this project? Is the reason this project was happening around 20, 25 years back, like from 1990 means you would have think, what might be the cost of sequencing at the time? So at the time, for sequencing one base pair, just one base pair is three dollars. So think about human genome is consist of millions of base pairs. To sequence millions of base pairs, it required around nine million dollars at the time. That's literally mind blowing, right? So we will check out how they conducted this project and what are the salient features of this project next. To do this humongous project, we require a lot of uh, manpower as well as a lot of planning has to be done. So think about like a project for 13 years, then how much should have been planned and how, how much manual uh, work force might have needed. So they proposed two uh, procedures to conduct this experiments or current this project. One was sequence, express the sequence tags, which is we shortly call EST. This is only sequencing exons. So we know our genome is made up of two types of genes. One is exon and one is intron. Exons are the genes which express and codes for a protein. Introns are the genes which are like turned off genes. They don't express or they don't code for any protein. Okay, so express the sequence tags is a procedure which we only sequence the expressing uh, genes. But another method is sequence annotation. Sequence annotation is sequencing the whole DNA, like whole entire DNA from the starting A to Z. We are sequencing everything present in our gene. So after lots of discussion and research, scientists have gone through the second option, which is sequence annotation, of, which is sequencing a whole genome. They decided to sequence everything and they selected sequence annotation. Now coming to the procedure, to simplify this procedure very shortly, we can say it in four steps. So how did they do it? it first is DNA extraction from the cell. So they extracted all the DNA from the cell. And second step is DNA fragmentation. So we can't be just uh, sequencing everything everything as it is from the cells. They have to fragment it with using restriction endonuclease. What's the reasons of fragment is we will get to know next. We will say it simply if you use a password like when well, we are logging into Facebook or Instagram, if we enter the password and if we, are, we think we made a mistake, we used to erase everything and we used to type again. But if there is any options like we can correct only the place where we made error, then it will be easy enough. That's the main reason of fragmentation. So like we can't, if we are sequencing a whole uh, genes and DNA as a complete stretch, if there is a mistake, then we have to do it everything from the again. But if we fragment it into small, small pieces, we can sequence it the small uh, pieces easily and then we can overlap and then we can uh, sequence it uh, we can study the sequence even much more comfortably so third step is dna cloning so we used to host and vector which in this vector is a bacterial uh, artificial chromosome and yeast, yeast artificial chromosomes after cloning this uh, genes we will sequence so for sequencing we use the sanger sequencing method otherwise also uh, the extent uh, that updated version is called a shotgun sequencing so in, this is the basic and very simplest explanation function as how they did this human genome project so salient features of this human genome project. In simple words, we can say like uh, 10 interesting findings of this project like that we can say. So first fact is 3.16 billion base pairs are present in human genome. So think about how many base pairs like billion, 3.16 billion means if you couldn't imagine, I can say it in simple words, like put a three and I put nine zeros next to that, that huge number of uh, base pairs are present in human genome. And uh, second interesting fact is a uh, human gene can approximately contain 3000 bases. So like uh, if we take a common human gene, approximately 3000 bases are present in that single gene. And third interesting fact is around 30,000 genes have been sequenced in a human genome project in a human so like uh, if we take a human body approximately there is 30,000 genes in him so you may now it has been extended like uh, now they have sequenced much more detail and they are present like 35,000 and uh, it's uh, going on but approximately 30,000 genes has been sequenced in a human okay then is the most interesting fact which I felt personally like 99.9% .9 of all our human genome is similar this one person is making these all kind of differences Less than next interesting fact is less than two percent of this genome is coding for protein. So that means less than two percent is exons. Other than all are introns which are turned off genes, they code for nothing and they are just being signed. 50% of the genes functions are unknown, even though they sequence around like all the uh, parts of the genome or human genome, but 50% of the uh, function of this genes are unknown. They are present, but we couldn't understand what's their function yet. Mostly of uh, these 
in our human genome mostly we could find a repeated sequence like uh, you know the, the human genome is made up of atgc adenine thymine guanine cytosine so like this uh, four bases will be repeating na so most of them are repeated sequence like cat 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 like this uh, repeated sequence was coming gta 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 means not grand theft auto it is guanine thymine guanine thymine and adenine so like uh, gta gta it may, it may be repeating so these kind of repeating sequence was uh, found in our human genome commonly next i like to categorize this three facts in uh, into a single fact like uh, the gene in our human genome is dystrophin which consists of 2.4 million base pair okay so, so that's a huge gene Since. more number of gene was present in chromosome 1 so approximately 2968 genes have been sequenced in chromosome 1 itself and less genes very good the chromosome which is having very less gene is chromosome y so these are the important and interesting findings from this human genome project so coming to the final part of this video which is applications of human genome project so the main reason for this project is to study about our genome why to study about our genome the main reason is like at the time there were many genetic disorders which were untreatable so the even now many gen genetic disorders are untreatable now but at the time it like we we couldn't even understand what is genetic disorder and how it is happening so to study about to pre diagnose these kind of diseases and disorders this human genome project helped to like gave a lot of information about our genome and how it is constructed and what are the sequences there, so that we could pre diagnose any genetic disorder and treat it effectively second thing is health in our dna technology so thing is forensic so uh, we would have seen in many movies like from the fingerprint we can find out who is the uh, culprit or uh, from the hair or from the dna we can find out who is the thief or murderer or like by just studying about human genome only so there would be as i said there will be some snp which are unique to some people particular people so by snp and comparing with the sample and the suspect we have we can find out whether uh, uh, who did the murder or any what are the crime has been done or who did the crime at that spot uh, next interesting application is genetic mapping so uh, for studying about genetic diseases we have to know uh, what is the arrangement of gene and uh, last is bioinformatics so this so bioinformatics is a whole new field which Which developed after this uh, project. Uh, the main reason for this to store data and to analyze uh, the data. So bioinformatics is a disciplinary field that develops methods and softwares for understanding biological data. So if we are studying about our genome, we can't be writing in our notes now. Like if you think about writing uh, 3.16 billion base pairs in a paper and print, like it will take uh, so many years. So we seek the help of computers and software. So people develop new softwares to analyze these kind of uh, uh, big uh, data. Until now, this bioinformatics is having a lot of demand in our life science field. I hope in this video we would have got basic information like how human genome project has been done and what are the salient features about it and applications of human genome project and uh, bioinformatics and everything so that's all